making video content for social media, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, for the internet at large is a significant undertaking. requires commitment, planning, effort, energy, and all the stuff that you have limited resources of because you're busy running a business and yet video seems to want more and more. Social media wants more and more. If you look at the algorithms of Instagram, of TikTok, Facebook, or any platform out there, they seem to be somewhat greedy in terms of demanding more and more content from you. It's getting more and more crowded in the feeds and taking more and more energy and effort on your part to win. And so there's a massive challenge. How do you keep up? Do you just stop? Well, that's not gonna work because look at the opportunity. Social media has given businesses unparalleled access to consumers from a marketing standpoint in a way that was never before imagined, especially video first content. Because if you're in a relationship based business, like real estate, for instance, a know you like you trust you kind of business, then there is simply no marketing format, no marketing medium quite like video in terms of being able to convey that relationship styled marketing. You can't ignore it. So the way I see it, you got three choices. You could quit your day job and just make video all the day long, and that's probably not an option for you. You could just keep doing what you've been doing, the minimum, but that's not gonna solve the problems of feeling exhausted and overwhelmed. Or you could identify a smarter way to work. How could you get more output for less input? What are three different types of videos you could produce that are highly efficient and highly effective today? That's exactly what we talk about. Three videos that are highly efficient, highly effective, vertical videos for you to produce in your business. Welcome to This Week in Marketing. My name is Jason Pantana, your instructor, and I'm super glad you're here. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. And also, if you have insight or an epiphany during the video, we'd love to hear your feedback in the comments. So without further ado, let's dive into the topic. Three vertical videos that are easy to produce, effective, efficient, and get the right return on your effort. Now, before I dive into the actual three videos, a caveat first. This is not a conversation about gear. I don't really care if you've hired a videographer or if you're shooting with a mirrorless or DSLR camera and you're a, a gearhead, or if you're using your phone. Great quality content isn't necessarily a measure of the gear you use. It's about what you say and how you connect. So today's videos don't really make a consideration for the kind of gear you're using. Yet at the same time, I would encourage you to be cognizant of, is this something I can do on repeat? We're looking for efficiencies. What are the types of videos you can make on repeat over and over and over again so that over time you can generate a bigger return on your effort? Okay, the first video to produce is called a talking head video. I know, super creative title, thank you so much. <laughs> I don't mean to boast. What's a talking head video? Well, it simply means that you're looking at a camera and you're talking, and it could be a camera like that or it could be a phone, selfie style. You're talking to a camera, presumably demonstrating your expertise. Now, I want you to think about who follows you on Facebook, on Instagram, on your major platforms. And I'm willing to bet it's people you know, who already theoretically know you like you, the question is do they trust you from a professional standpoint? It's probably sphere of influence contacts, past clients and folks like that. It may be other folks who are in your local marketplace who are just kind of getting a sense of who's out there and listening in from time to time. But I want you to consider just how important video could be in terms of driving people's trust for working with you. Think about it. You're making calls to your database contacts on the regular right? You're talking to your sphere. You're talking to past clients because you want to maintain a relationship a know you like you trust you relationship. However, it's not always the easiest to get into a real estate conversation over the phone. However, on social media, there's nothing stopping you ever. You could produce video after video after video where you give away information, you share advice, you demonstrate your expertise, and it's working for you all the time. Every single video, every single post, it's demonstrating, wow, what a competent agent this person is. They're really, really knowledgeable. That's like, I didn't think about that. That's great. So that when you do make that phone call, they ask you, hey, I was watching your video. How about this or how about that? Your videos are positioning you as an expert so that you can truly check all three boxes, know you, like you, trust you. So if you look at the platforms of Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube, when you're building vertical videos, reels, shorts, and so forth, all those platforms provide a feature or an effect that's called a green screen. It's kind of like the weather person has the green screen behind them. Well, what it can do is remove whatever background is behind you, superimpose you, the talking head, overlaid on top of whatever your background is. And so what a lot of rockstar agents are doing is they're grabbing screenshots or screen recordings of 
real estate news articles and they're giving their perspective. They're sharing their commentary on what matters in a local context for their followers on those given platforms. So green screens are also a form of talking head videos. Talking head videos are characteristically about demonstrating and sharing your expertise because ultimately that's what you sell. It's your expertise. People hire you to perform the function that you can do because of your expertise. Just sharing tips and advice, talking head videos where you look at the camera and you demonstrate expertise and give knowledge, be the knowledge broker, are highly, highly valuable in terms of positioning you as the agent of choice amongst your database, your followers, and beyond. Now, one more note about these. I would include subtitles of some form, uh, titles or subtitles, captions. Every one of the major platforms out there YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, they all have the ability to create auto-generated captions whereby folks can read along with what you're saying. Here's the reason that's super important because a large population of viewers are watching your videos with the sound off. They can't hear you. They're watching with the sound off. Why? Because they're laying in bed and they don't want to disturb their partner or something like that. They're watching with the sound off, especially if they're in the main feeds. If you're in the news feed of Facebook or if you're in the main feed of Instagram, by default, the sound is turned off. There are some platforms where that's not the case, but folks still turn their volume down. A recent Facebook study determined that 85% of videos are watched with the sound off. Ergo, include subtitles so folks can read along and decide, hey, is this something I really wanna continue watching or should I turn the sound on and listen? Your captions make a big, big difference. Now, if you don't wanna use the provided built-in captions of the different platforms, you have a few options. There are third-party apps like V.io, uh, like the Captions app, whereby you can get some fun animated sort of captions with different colors and fonts to sort of dress up your videos. You can also consider hiring a freelance editor who's working in Premiere Pro or something like that. Don't have one? Just go to Fiverr or Upwork to find yourself a freelance editor. So that's talking head videos. Know you, like you, trust you. Demonstrate your expertise. Now, our second video is called a selfie gimbal tour. First, let me explain what that even means and then we'll talk about why it's important and how to execute on it. In terms of what it is, we all get what a selfie is. It's when you grab your phone and you look like this and it looks at you, it's a selfie. So what's a gimbal? Well, this is a gimbal, specifically a DJI Osmo gimbal, and you just mount your iPhone in it, and it stabilizes the shot. So when you're walking, you don't have the bouncy choppiness as if you were holding it with your arm. Instead, it stabilizes the shot. Now, the new iPhones do have the action mode, which can help stabilize the shot. Really, the main function of this thing here is twofold. Stabilize the shot so it's continuous because we're doing a tour video of some type. And two, there's little controls on it so you can turn the recording on and off, zoom in, you can swivel it and all kinds of controls like that to make for a more continuous tour video. So we're talking about selfie gimbal tours, tours of what? Well, tours of properties, maybe tours of neighborhoods, maybe tours of communities at large, that sort of a thing, but ideally tours of property. Because if you think about the last video segment, we were demonstrating expertise. You were showing the consumer that you were a know you, like you, trust you kind of agent. You were demonstrating expertise. Well, touring properties puts you inside the thing you sell. It showcases a social proof aspect of, oh wow, you look really busy. You're showing properties and you're out in the field. You must have a lot of listings and things like that. I would encourage you to consider having more property tour videos on your Instagram because it shows you in action. You may object and say, well, I don't have any listings. Okay, well, ideally, these would be your listings. Truly, I mean, ideally, these would be your listings. But if they're not, huh, what else could you tour? Well, you could reach out to agents who have listings at your office and ask for the proper consent. Can I tour your property? I'll give you all the proper consent. Get the consent. I can't stress that enough. Don't just do videos of other people's listings. If you get proper consent, however, you can. You could also talk to new construction developments and see if you can't tour their properties. Most will say, sure, yeah, just make sure you give me the proper consent for it because it only promotes their listings to a larger demographic of potential buyers. If they truly have the seller's best interest in mind, they should not object. Okay, so what do you do once you have the subject property you want to tour? Here's the best practices for actually executing on one of these selfie gimbal tours. First, you want to arrive at the property and make sure it's prepped and ready for the video. So walk in, turn the lights on, open up the blinds, stuff like that. And then when you're ready to start filming, you've got your gimbal, you're doing your selfie and you're out front, and you start by saying to the camera, selfie style, hey, welcome to one, two, three, banana street, blah, blah, blah. You give a quick intro. You then use the swivel control that's on the gimbal, like the DJI Osmo I showed you, that rotates the camera so it's now forward facing and you begin touring the property. You walk through the property and my advice is when you walk through the property, walk through every room, you walk to the corner of that room, turn, 
pan from left to right so you show the whole thing and then walk to the next corner. In terms of where and how you hold the gimbal, it's best if you hold it sort of center because it will give an equidistant proportional view of to the ceiling and to the floor. If you hold it up too high, it makes it look like the ceilings are really low. If you hold it too low, it makes it look really kind of funky. So hold the camera about middle so that it has equidistance between the ceiling and the floor to give it a proportional view. You're gonna also wanna use your phone zoomed out to that 0.5 to get sort of that wide lens view on your phone if you're using a phone. I would also encourage you to consider 4K so you get a higher definition, a higher resolution. And there's something on your phone called FPS, frames per second. It's set to 30 frames a second. If you tap it on your iPhone, it will change it to 60 frames a second, which will give a lot more quality to the shot. So that's hold it about mid-level, so you have ceiling, floor, spaced evenly, 60 frames a second, 4K at a 0.5% magnification, so zoomed out for that wide lens look. Now, if you wanna get super fancy and you're an Apple user, did you know that if you use this camera, the good camera on your iPhone, not the selfie one, the good camera, that you can actually pair it with your Apple Watch so you can see what it sees and then make sure you're in frame when you do the selfie portion. Oh, yeah, you can do that. Once you're done with the tour, you can download an app like Splice, S-P-L-I-C-E. It's like four or five bucks a month, something like that. Go look it up. And you can use it for a super quick edit. One of the features of Splice I like a lot is what's called speed ramping. You can speed up and slow down the footage so that as people are walking from side to side, corner to corner, you can speed it up, slow it down for the turn, speed it up, slow it down for the turn to create one of those really nice looking videos of touring a property. So think about this from an efficiency standpoint. You're out in the field touring properties. You always have your gimbal with you, your phone with you. You get the proper consent to make a video. You can shoot the video in a matter of minutes, edit the video in a matter of minutes, and you're done and on to the next. And it becomes a rinse, lather, repeat type of process in your video marketing mix. Our third and final video today is a local spotlight voiceover. Now, what is a local spotlight? And then we'll talk about the voiceover in a second. A local spotlight is you using your phone, your camera to shine the spotlight on maybe a local business a local attraction, some little treasure that's in your community where you want your followers to know how much you love and know about your community. So it's you shining the spotlight on something local. So you get the local spotlight part of it. Let's talk about the voiceovers. Well, if you're making vertical videos like Reels or YouTube Shorts or TikTok videos, all those platforms, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, they all provide a function called a voiceover, whereby when you're making your clips, you're putting your clips together to make the reel, you have the ability to record an overdub a voiceover after the fact. So what a lot of folks are doing is they're out at a cool restaurant just grabbing little clips of, oh, this delicious burger, or look at this new parkway trail system they put in the little town square, things like that. They're just grabbing their phones and they're documenting at random, saving it to their phone's camera roll. And then they're coming back after the fact and they're taking those clips and they're making the reel and they're putting it all together in maybe some kind of a template. And then they're using the voiceover function that Reels provides you to record one cohesive narrator perspective of, hey, we were taking a walk in the town square of such and such town and we noticed the new trail system is complete. And then you start talking about what the clips are showing them. It's a voiceover function. This means you can film at random without the pressure of, I'm on, am I camera ready? Do I look right? Am I, do I know what I'm gonna say? None of that matters because you're just documenting clips as you go about your day. And then at the end, when you wanna put it all together to make the reel, you simply, tie it together with one cohesive voiceover. In a world where making content and planning and prepping to make videos takes a lot of effort and work, this is about as easy as it gets because you can truly do it on the fly and these videos perform really, really well. One hack to record voiceovers if you don't have a professional quality mic is to take your phone, whatever you're recording on, into a bedroom closet where there's clothes on the hangers. Those clothes will absorb any sound that's bouncing off the walls and it will make for a really, really nice quality, crisp, no reverb kind of voiceover. So it sounds professional even though it was just recorded on your phone. That is a local spotlight voiceover video. Hey, if you're watching this and you're thinking, I could really use a step-by-step -step training or demonstration on exactly how to make these kinds of videos, be sure to check out our course, Cracking the Social Code. It's part of our Marketing Pro training platform, and that course, Cracking the Social Code, is all about social media marketing. It's about Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. It goes into a lot more than video, but it focuses intently on video as the ultimate form of content marketing with lots and lots of step-by-step -step demonstrations 
All said and done, the course is about three and a half hours of on-demand video content that's yours. So there you have it, three vertical videos to produce that are highly efficient, highly effective, and give you a great return on your effort because video marketing doesn't have to be as hard and tedious as it's made out to be if you work smarter, not harder. I wanna hear from you, which of these three videos are you gonna try out first? Let us know in the comments. And also, if you have other ideas for efficient to make videos that are performing at a super high level, put it in the comments. Go check the comments because that thread's gonna have a lot of good stuff in it. Thanks so much for watching. Until next week, this is This Week in Marketing.